Hi everyone, it's Jessica Shaw, and I am here with Robert Pope, and uh, he has, has some really interesting things to share, and I'm very excited to have him here to um, tell us about his work and the importance of bridging science and art right now to uh, prevent chaos, the destruction, uh, the direction that we are heading towards chaos by not having these two working together, um, and this is a big folly that we really need to pay attention to right now. And scholars like Robert Pope are taking this very seriously and uh, working on uh, a new way to understand this so that we can turn the situation around and head towards peace and harmony. You know, Robert, tell us a bit more about yourself and, and your background and how you got started in this kind of work. Well, in 1972, mm -hmm. I was working with some scientists about environmental reality, right? Mm -hmm. We knew that the civilization is tending towards chaos all the time, mm -hmm. without any logical ceasefire, cease if you wish. Mm -hmm. So, the next year I got a, a bursary from the West Australian government, and I started to study ancient Egyptian religion that was about averting chaos, that was under the, um, from the goddess Maat. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at the mathematics that the Egyptians were using and comparing it to the mathematics in nearby Babylon. Mm -hmm. And they were much different. Now, I realised then that Buckminster Fuller had done the same thing in his book, Utopia or Oblivia. Okay. So then, 14 years later, Army Edmondson, the Nevada professor at Harvard University, wrote a biography of Fuller's work. Mm. And she said, naughty button. He should have told people that he got all this stuff from the mystery schools of Egypt that were taken over to Greece mm -hmm. to become a platonic science for ethical ends. And that's the mathematics of Fuller that 14 years later, I knew we were on the right track and I was able to coherently write about this mm. and the ABC in Australia made a documentary about it. Mm. At that time I wasn't a professor. Mm. It was called um, The Scientists, Profiles in Discovery. Mm. But the impact it had on the top scientists in Australia was so catastrophic that were really, really angry because Fuller, in his balanced universe, mm -hmm. had shown that Einstein had no comprehension of what he was doing because he had developed the ethos mm -hmm. of mathematics from Babylon. And that was a different thing entirely. That was harming the credibility of the way the, the uh, scholars and universities were basing their teachings off of Einstein and they didn't want to uh, look at it. They were too scared. Where this was leading as a... That, that's correct. Yeah. The, Einstein established a, a basic law to govern everything. Mathematics, humanities, the works, right? Right. And that law was based on the inevitable total destruction of all life in the universe. Right? A long time ahead, he thought, but it's not a good attitude to have when you're making artificial intelligence with a prime directive that all life must be destroyed. Yeah. So the, he, he was actually worshipping chaos. And how did that get allowed to start? It, it was not allowed to start, it was mathematically the, the ethos of the Babylonian um, culture. Whilst the Egyptian one was to avert that chaos. So it all became a mathematical expression of intuition. Mm -hmm. Right. right. There was a loving disposition in Egypt mm -hmm. under the goddess Maat. So she was um, a mythical invention, a mathematical invention. Right? Okay. So then the Greeks developed from the ethics of Maat, that was love, compassion, right, and truth and justice. Mm -hmm. they, they developed her objective to prevent the universe from reverting to chaos. Okay. And they gave it a mathematical form. <coughs> Pardon me. The mathematical form was was developed by the the, the Greeks, mm -hmm. as I said, right. into this science. But the first form of it was a kind of steroid that was lifeless. Mm -hmm. 
Anaxagoras, the philosopher, okay. he said that God, the Creator had come down, mm -hmm. made this part of the universe according to some whirling forces mm -hmm. that acted on primordial particles in our space to make the worlds. That's gravity. Right. Then he spun the worlds yes. that gave the music of the spheres to generate intelligence. Universe. You yep. need one verse song. Right. Harmony, all this yes. Harmony. So the 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 Greeks did not want chaos as an end goal. They wanted to stop it. Okay? Mm -hmm. But in Babylon, the goddess that was the, the mathematical developed from the mathematics. Einstein called it a mythical reality, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mythological reality. The mathematics there had another ethos. Their goddess was the goddess of prostitution and war. Okay. Not minding, I would like to have gone to a few classes, but it was not the ethos from the Egyptian one, which was peace and harmony within the family. So that was my question. How did it become so backwards? How did it go from this the Egyptian perspective and their goal and objective for humanity into uh, following the Babylonian way of destruction? Because you've heard of the Fibonacci series yes. in the Soul and Mean Mathematics. Yes, we were talking about that last right. time. Fibonacci taught Leonardo da Vinci mathematical thinking right. from the Babylonian ethos. Mm -hmm. Da Vinci could not grasp the optical the optical engineering principles, if you wish, mm -hmm. that Buckminster Fuller found from the Egyptian one. Okay. And then You've got Lord Bertrand Russell. Right. Now, when he was an adolescent, mm -hmm. he wanted to commit suicide because he was unhappy. But the only thing that kept him alive in his biography, autobiography, mm -hmm. was to create a mythical, uh, understand about mythical mathematics. Mm -hmm. And he advocated in his book a free man's worship. That's the most famous essay. That Russell wrote, he, he got into a Nobel Prize for this sort of stuff. Okay. He said that we have to worship the mathematics of chaos that Einstein had written down ruled the universe. Right? Okay, and that word became stone somehow? Sorry? That word became set in stone somehow that we have to follow? Oh, obviously, yes. Uh -huh. Einstein said yes. Uh -huh. so, so, and also, he said that there was no escape from the despair that everything that we think that is great mm -hmm. is meaningless. That's a terrible stuff. And we are in that world now. Yes. So now, Fuller, like Mr. Fuller, mm -hmm. developed the mathematics to challenge Einstein's worldview. And now we have a thing called nanotechnology that can prove that Einstein had picked the wrong ethos. Yes, and you thought you were explaining that in your article here. Did you want to elaborate a bit more on that? Yes, all right. Einstein thought that the universe was winding and down, mm -hmm. that energy from supernovae was going out into cold space mm -hmm. until one day it would become so cold mm -hmm. that all life would be destroyed completely. Okay. But, so yeah, for example, yes, last, yeah. last year they had a cloud chamber in the CERN collider, you know, where the atoms were. were Electromagnetic stuff whizzed around him, and they took all the air out of this stainless steel object mm -hmm. and they put in fresh air and then they hit it with the radiation, the cosmic radiation from dying novae, 30 million years, light years old from Milky Way, and it caused the rain to condense. Mm -hmm. Not dust in the air, but the radiation. And looking at that, other scientists were, were able to work out some biological effects happening in, in the top of the atmosphere from doing that. And they linked it to the formation of emotional endocrine fluids. Okay. That's, now that, to make that real so that you can work on it as something pragmatic, you have the molecule of emotion discovered by Dr. Candice Perry 40 years ago. And you can then see that one of the side effects is 
the manufacture of endocrine fluids. It's extremely important to pay attention to that right now, the molecule of emotion. Exactly. Yes. People don't know there's a molecule of emotion. Well, scientists wouldn't think like that anyway, but I mean, this is something that is really important for us to get back in touch with. That's and, right. And give that merit and credibility. The credibility comes from the molecule of emotion mm -hmm. supplies rigorous, that means you can depend on it, right? Yes. Mathematics. Mm -hmm. Now, there's plenty of mathematics, of course. Einstein's got the mathematics for, for blowing up the world. Mm -hmm. A Nobel Prize was given to the gentleman in the, 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 the was a star in, uh, not, not Russell Crowe, but in the film, the, uh, the Beautiful Mind. Okay, yeah. The guy was a schizophrenic to me, nut. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. He didn't work. His mathematics had a flaw in it that scientists now are beginning to realise or consider that it may have collapsed the economy of the Soviet Union. Americans might have a smile. Now it's collapsing the global one. Yeah, at what that, cost? Sorry? At what cost? I would follow that route. Of course, that's yeah. how that meant. You don't get a Nobel unless you understand your, your, your mathematics. So that's the mathematics that is not avoiding chaos. Mm -hmm. It's the mathematics that is creating chaos. Right. That's how serious the situation is. Yes. Now to get something rigorous, exact, so you don't get along onto this line of thinking, mm -hmm. you look at the molecule of emotion to see where its mathematical direction is going. And it completely contradicts the Einsteinian world view. And you've got to change technology accordingly and to prove it. And you can do that if you have your, your rigorous, that's exact science from the molecule. You can photograph virtually mm -hmm. the functioning of what I'm talking about in the molecule, disregarding or disobeying Einstein's worldview. So we, we know how to do this now. And the proof is in the pudding now. We can really see how significant exactly. this is and where we went wrong to be able to avert this right now. Yes. And that's why we're doing this interview and why it's so important. Yes. Yeah, because it speaks for itself. You can't, mm. you can't, it, it stands on its own of how, you can't distort it in that way once you have a clear picture of what is happening and how it works. Well, we can start off with the emotions that you're feeling as an energy form, mm -hmm. right? Yes. You have to express yourself some one way or another. Mm -hmm. That's energy pushing. Yes. The things that you are saying are now at the cutting edge of quantum biology, not quantum mechanics. Finally. <laughs> Finally. People like me have known about this for a long time. We're waiting patiently well, for science and, and scholars to catch on because we've been made fun of and ridiculed for no, a long time. No, like no, 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 and stuff like that. You, you can't make fun of it because if we don't get it right, we're not going to get anywhere. Well, that's the thing. I mean, get out of our egos, right? Which is what is the case for a lot of well, people Well, you can say that. I'm looking at it from science. Mm -hmm. For example, a lot of people were very worried to think that there was a formula for love. Mm -hmm. Alright? There is. Of course. It's real and it can be written down. It started off when the Greeks thought that the movement of the moon around the earth somehow affected the female cycle. Mm -hmm. Then they realised from the nous of Anaxagoras that the moon was sending a musical or a harmonic mm -hmm. information to the atoms of the soul of mm -hmm. the mother. And that science was considered then to be a science of universal love explaining a mother's love and compassion for children. Mm -hmm. And Pythagoras put light into this plate, the all-seeing eye. Yes. And the minute he did that, the whole structure of the movement is electromagnetic motors. Mm -hmm. And the 18th and 19th century scientists that were developing that mathematics, like Immanuel Kant, Austin, Schelling, Humboldt, etc., mm -hmm. they were all talking what you're talking. Mm -hmm. They were looking for a mathematical proof so they could build a motor to make the electric motor a child's toy by comparison. Mm -hmm. And we know now what they were looking for. And I can explain it quite simply to you if, if, if you'd like. Please do, yes. It's just love and uh, consciousness is something that I feel has been lacking for a long time in everything that we're doing. And what, that's why we've been going astray with everything that we've been creating. Like, yes. We're only to that. Exactly. Unless it's for quick money. We're in trouble. Yes. We, 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 we're not going anywhere. Okay. And there's no equation to it, therefore it's no tangibility, therefore we rule it out and we don't exactly. give it the attention it needs. Exactly. Now this is what these electromagnetic people were looking for. Mm -hmm. 
they were looking for a motor to explain God's ethic for perpetual peace on earth. Right? Yes. If you open the Encyclopedia Britannica or any encyclopedia about Immanuel Kant, mm -hmm. it says oh, he was a great philosopher, the most completely influenced Western philosophy today. Yes. And they don't tell you what I've just told you. He was looking for that, not for perpetual economic growth and development, for the goodness of the um, community, which is rubbish. Is what we were studying. Right now. right now, here's where we go. The okay. sperm is driven, its tail is wagged yeah. by a tiny electromagnetic motor. Okay. Okay. When the sperm goes to the egg mm -hmm. and goes into the egg, the skin, the membrane of the ovum mm -hmm. is a liquid crystal optic, the all-seeing eye, if you wish. Mm -hmm. It sees things at nano scale. Oh. Then the female field from that electromagnetic field in there morphs the electric motor into a centriole. And we know where the centriole is, and a lot of research on it now. You have to rewrite the whole of chemistry accordingly, mm -hmm. the whole of mathematics, the whole of physics accordingly mm -hmm. to get into what you're talking about. Yes, I and, totally agree. Yeah, and, and we're, we, we know how to do that now because, and I'm a member of almost a 6,000 strong nanotechnology um, group of scientists. Right. And, and they, they continue my blog. Right, they're not for me. Mm -hmm. To put ethics into the nanotechnology, mm -hmm. otherwise it can be very destructive. Yes, yep. I have seen that. So now nature doesn't have that though. I find. Yeah, with nanotechnology of nature, it has it's that. It's getting it's touching it, like you're touching it. They're touching it too, right? Mm -hmm. And we have to come together. Now the the centriole, right, mm -hmm. has a message to say about where to go for your health in a spiritual dimension, okay? Mm -hmm. But the eye has where to go for your health when you're running through a forest, you don't bang into a tree. Mm. But the nanotechnology one cannot tangle this lens, it's too big. Mm -hmm. It has to have another lens and that lens communicates to your brain through intuition. Yes. Now that has been discovered, I predicted that 10 years before two Chinese scientists discovered last year mm -hmm. that the dance of life, full as jitterbug if you wish, mm -hmm. in, of, of the protein in DNA mm -hmm. acted accordingly to what I said in defiance of Einstein's worldview. It's been measured, it's been worked out mathematically. So the closer we're getting to this now, we, we need to make a connection to people like yourself as quick as we can. Yes. Because we don't understand the complexities of what is coming out from nano photography. It's unreal. It's very it's, it's all the stuff you're talking about. The hologram. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, and here's the thing. Mathematically, the hologram wants to go to infinity. Yeah. It used to be called your immortal soul. Humanity wants to go to infinity. I mean, this is what motivates me. But that's thinking. forbidden by Einstein. <laughs> that's why we've created a new way. That's, that's right. That's why we create the right way. We, we pay attention to what's not working and, and um, what are the, the blocks or disinfo in the past. And um, catch that, be conscious of that, move forward and don't go back into that kind of thing. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're infinite potential and the way we're living right now is such an insult. And we can be living. Exactly. I, I think we, we owe it to ourselves to mm -hmm. experience this infinite potential and live it firsthand. Well, this so is the, this is the crux. You're, you're expressing infinite potential, which we are too. Yes. But the universities of the world, or up until the, during the 20th century, yeah. you'd be asked to leave the room. I know, I have a scholar for a brother. He constantly yeah. like... Because you have no education or background or tangibility to... Yeah. But the, 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 there were scientists last century working on the electromagnetic input into young children mm -hmm. at preschool age. Mm -hmm. That was Maria Montessori with her Montessori school. Mm -hmm. Now, here's what can happen if it's ignored, right? President Woodrow Wilson put her school into the White House. Okay. And Alexander Graham Bell, who was financing mm -hmm. Montessori, mm -hmm. and the Jesuit priest Teilhard de Chardin. Mm -hmm. And they decided that this electromagnetic effect 
was really to do with Einstein's worldview. And they set up a thing called eugenics. And, yes. the, yeah, and, and it got out of control. Churchill and uh, a lot of people were, were teaching it until in, Embarrassing. in various parts of America were teaching it full on. Mm. One was California. Mm. And um, Alexander Graham Bell had a, uh, a co-director. And they were getting out of control. They were, I think President Wilson, uh, Woodrow Wilson, sterilised 60,000 Americans unfit to breed. Now, from a point of view that, that they might have had syphilis or something terrible, that didn't seem so dreadful. But it got out of control when the director from the, the co-director went to Berlin and worked with Hitler on the Third Reich, based on the same thing. So at the end of World War II, when they were trying the, um, the criminals, mm -hmm. they said, look, when they got it from America. This is madness. The mathematics, the electromagnetic mathematics lacked the ethics that came from the 18th and 19th century experts in, in, in the electromagnetic field mm -hmm. that Montessori and the Jesuit priest Teilhard de Chardin and he wrote equations to balance E equals MC squared mm -hmm. and that law was described and the, the whole chaos thing was called by Montessori the greed energy law taking us to war all the time. That's how serious it is. So now, now that we can measure that that was wrong, you can make it into legal, uh, a, a legal proposition to put to the United Nations and UNESCO and a medical one. Obviously, it's, it's handling everything you're saying because in the brain, this is huge. <laughs> we need to start working from when the Centriole energizes the first bone in the embryo, mm -hmm. that is the sphenoid bone, right. which vibrates to the seashell shape of the ear. Mm -hmm. Our colleague at the Texas University has written a book that thick on the electromagnetic music of the spheres mm -hmm. potential of the brain, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it's getting its instructions from the sphenoid bone. What we did last century. China's greatest scientist told me a research methodology to discover new physics laws governing by optimum biological growth and development through space-time. Mm -hmm. He said you get the sacred geometries, which you know about, mm -hmm. in the seashell formations, and you make a program on a computer and check through the fossil record of differences over space-time events, yeah. and you get the mathematics for the new physics laws, and we did that. We programmed a computer mm -hmm. with the music of the spheres, math yeah. mathematics. Yeah, a spiral, it will be. Correct, and we got a simulation of a living seashell creature. Then we lowered the formula by, say, an octave. Okay. And we got the fossil ancestor on the computer, a simulation. Mm -hmm. Then we lowered the mathematics by less than an octave. Mm -hmm. And we've got a strange creature that once floated off the coast of Japan 30 million years ago and we've become the first institute in the world to link that strange creature to a living one, right? No. So now we're getting back to the spinoid bone and, the, and the, the, the seashell design of the ear. The seashell design of the creature kept it upright in water. Mm -hmm. This one keeps you upright on land, mm -hmm. so we can get the evolutionary jump from how to extrapolate through 30 million years of space time to get an accurate, an accurate drawing, a rigorous simulation of biological growth and development. We can do it now for humans, because the mathematical mythology given to me by China's greatest physicist, mm -hmm. Kan Yuang, mm -hmm. is exactly the same as to the seashells, but it's in DNA and genome, mm -hmm. and we know how to do it now. And that seashell here is also the exact same of uh, the, where is it now, that word just left me, um, galaxy, sorry, oh, oh, yes. as well. And yes, so right. that shows that mm -hmm. God or source, whatever term you want to use, is inside us and we are inside it. And it's just a micro of a macro looping, and that's, you can understand the hologram and, um, 
for yes. describing things very well. But if you had to give a lecture, now I'm serious. You're past the rocket scientist, right? I was taught once in correspondence by a guy called, he was Professor um, Kozirev, Nikolai Kozirev, mm -hmm. who had been put in a gulag by Stalin. Most of them died. Stalin. And he survived because he was doing engineering work for the war effort, probably. Mm -hmm. And when he got out of his jail, I was corresponding with him for a long time. And he was, I think, very a genius. He was talking about the forces that you're talking about mm -hmm. in life affecting matter, mm -hmm. right? Now, he, we realised that when Einstein was talking about quantum observer participancy, right? Mm -hmm. That was the mind, the eye, mm -hmm. observing through a microscope at something very small, a subatomic particle, you have to use light to see what you're looking at. Yes. And when you do that, you alter the structure of the universe. That's so that's mind over matter in some way. Nice. But Einstein said about the mythical um, reality from the ancient um, Mesopotamian mathematics, mm -hmm. he said it must obey the laws of matter. Mm -hmm. Now Kozrev quite clearly pointed out that in our intuitive feelings of reality, we were talking about in the beginning was the abyss. Mm. Then came light. Mm. Then came matter. So Einstein had none of the godlike, if you wish to call it that, right. mathematics of that holographic reality that did exist. Now we now are photographing. Particularly because what we are noticing in the seashells and uh, exactly. the geometry, we can prove that that's not the case anymore. That we you can photograph it. That's right. And we'll show that here. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you. Good for you. <laughs> fantastic work. Uh, I just um, I want to give credibility to the inner child as well, and that in a sense, the, the ones that are able to understand this without having any kind of education. Because it seems like uh, if you don't have an education, nobody wants to listen to you kind of thing. Unless you have, don't have that piece of paper to determine your self-worth or aren't being taught what to think rather than how to think, you know? And just, I know that when children are born, like you were talking about early consciousness and understanding through the sperm or even just before that, just the development of them, that there is this understanding I find when we are very first into this planet, know exactly who we are, what we came here to do, and then the condition program needs sets in and we start to forget and disconnect it, and we go on this journey back to intuition and figuring out this loop, if you will, of time. This time is a loop or a spiral. And so it's just connecting. I just, people are like, well, how can you know this if you never studied or went to school or, or university or anything like that? And it's just the intuition connecting with what I knew when I was younger when I first came. That's good. And everybody needs to get to that point in order to get past all the. Well, Kosarev did not study higher mathematics when he was in the Gulag. Mm -hmm. He wasn't allowed to, right? Mm -hmm. But he did study the Greek naps. And he came to the same conclusions that you and I are interested in. Yeah. And the worst place he said you could go to a university yeah. is that you might become a silly rocket scientist to build a rocket going nowhere when spiritual energies can take you anywhere. I love that when you said that the last time we were speaking, you were just <laughs> that's the most silliest thing we can do with our time and energy is build a rocket compared to you know not giving all of our attention and energy to a machine rather than realizing that we are that technology exactly. in itself, you know, and all these other things do, uh, even crystals, if you will, it just amplifies, you know, so I always looked at tra uh, technology as training wheels, what we can do on our own, only we don't believe in ourselves, we believe in other things outside of ourselves, therefore it perpetuates the kind of reality towards destruction. That's right. Until we take responsibility. That's right. Now, you, you mentioned crystals. Yes. I have a quick little paper I've just written a little while ago. Oh, okay. The, in the beginning, things were governed by dinosaurs for a long time. Mm -hmm. The greatest dinosaur was not Tyrannosaurus rex, it was the female, she was bigger. Okay. It was Tyrannosaurus rexina, okay? <laughs> Do you give her that name? <laughs> yes, and, and, and she, needed, she, she needed more carbon for her eggs. And she got bigger, a third bigger than the other one. And he had to be very careful when they were mating or he'd be eating. Mm -hmm. So now all the 
belief in male aggression and so on, stemming from that mode of existence then is really out, it's finished. Mm. Now, when the dinosaur died, okay, from the fossil we know that some message somewhere was going to turn dinosaurs to birds because of the wishbone. Okay? Mm. But even more now about crystals, and this is amazing, it gets back to the cloud experiment in the chamber I told you when it is said that Einstein did not have it right. When the dinosaur died, it made a, a gooey kind of a thing called a liquid crystal soap. It was a greyish stuff. And if it was the dinosaur died in, say, a Texas opal field, mm -hmm. the fatty acids would mix with, I think it's four minerals, okay. and start to grow into a jasper. Mm -hmm. Only a jasper crystal, only if it was exposed to the cosmic radiation we were talking about that makes rain. So, so life now, from the dying nova, is actually to do with some life. Now, this is very complicated, and we're not too sure how it works. But when you photograph the quasi living crystal, if you wish, mm -hmm. from the dinosaur's fatty acid or the uh, vegetable. Uh, fatty essence from a tree, mm. you'll see that a growing is a um, crystal. When you view it, it defies Einstein's laws of, of reality. It, it fits into the holographic reality of David Bohm. Mm -hmm. That's Einstein's protege, right? Yeah, that came nice to strong case. It's great. Yes, it is. So this is very exciting. Very. And now, but people feel that crystals are something important, right? And they, they have wear different things and they say different things. This is okay. Yeah. They're on the ball. Mm -hmm. They're past the rocket scientist stage. Mm -hmm. The idiot rocket scientist, right? Mm -hmm. They're clever. But we do need to know a lot much more about these crystal growth. Yes. It's magic almost, right? It is. And when, when, you, when you understand um, the mathematics of it, mm -hmm. you can put the mathematics into a computer to see what you get. And it's, if it becomes part, of the workings of the molecule of emotion, you've got pay dirt, big time. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's the linking between the silly scientists that are trying to get on their feet and what you are talking about. We must make that connection, or as Fuller wrote, it's utopia or oblivion, because the aggression's getting worse. Mm. And it, it, it's, it's, um, all written up in this book here, in, in the book. When I tell people about your book, we have here the 21st century renaissance. Now this, this, this book is being written in liaison with the University of Florence's New Measurement of Humanity project. Mm -hmm. It's, um, they won a big medal from the government, mm -hmm. this one from the Republic of Government mm -hmm. for their development on their discoveries in quantum biology. And uh, they, uh, they, shared it, shared, they shared it with me actually. Okay. And here we have the Florentine New Measurement of Humanity project. Self-organising creative universal energies mm -hmm. becoming the basis of quantum biology. The very words you were saying the other day. So here we've got some really high-tech stuff mm -hmm. needing to link with the feminine mind. Yes. These energies are female. I, that's very exciting to see this in the universities finally. I'm really excited about that. Well, we, we're all in, in the beginning so of a new it. science, but we only want to listen to the laws that keep the molecule of emotion evolving to something better. I couldn't agree more. That's the basis of the science. And it's exactly what you're doing, but you're feeling it, you see. Yeah, I feel it. Now we want to know why you're feeling it. We do know that the dance of the golden mean or the sacred geometry dance of protein in DNA mm -hmm. has been mathematically worked out to exist. We've had doctors of um, medicine work out how that makes endorphin shapes to link mind and brain with the functioning of 
subatomic particles, mm -hmm. and that's the new science. Quantum biology. And we're feeling it because we know that's what we are. Good. And uh, when you embody it, you live it, and that's all you can see, and that governs your actions and uh, life. You can explain it another way. Okay. Entropy is chaos. Okay. I've got to get this right. This was written last century by science, right? Mm -hmm. If you have information about entropy, mm -hmm. you're ordering it, giving it order, mm -hmm. which is neg entropy, right? Mm -hmm. Which the Nobel laureate Sven Georgi said that scientists that didn't understand this was a crazy ape. But consciousness is evolving with an interaction with the chaos. Mm -hmm. Balancing it. Balancing it, exactly. It's extremely important because you can't have one without the other. The, the yin and yang right. symbol, white side is completely white, there's a dark circle, and the dark side is completely dark, there is a white circle. Good. What does that say? So, so now the, the thing is that in a average university, you're not allowed to even talk these things. Now I have got a gold medal laureate from an academy of science in London. And a bursary here which I saw, which we'll get into later. Yeah, thanks. And Welcome. I'm three times a professor without going to a university. Impressive. So No, it's not impressive, it's what you said it is. I felt, as you feel, mm -hmm. as, you, as you speak myself, mm -hmm. but I had to say I'm an artist, I want proof that that was in me. Now the proof is very strange. Still clever. And that's why it's impressive in an indirect way. Yeah. I know a lot I don't know. <laughs> I know I know, don't know a lot. But here's the artist now. This is magic. Dr. George Coburn was a bioaesthetician. And he was working on the mathematics of aesthetics. Mm. That is art appreciation theory. Mm. He wanted to get it into ethics, knowledge, wisdom through beauty. Mm. Ethics, the, the, the electromagnetic scientists wanted. Right. So he developed his mathematics and he wrote that he was convinced that some artists had a, were expressing Plato's spiritual optical engineering principles by painting holographically and talking holographically exactly the way you're talking, right? Mm -hmm. So now when we looked at the NAPS coming up, the basis of science in the West, giving it ethics, took 200 years. Mm -hmm. But when they were doing that, they had this mind um, observer participancy in action. Mm -hmm. They were changing the mathematics into a living one. Mm -hmm. Now the technical term for the, for the mathematics was that it become an asymmetrical electromagnetic wavelength phenomena, if you wish. Mm -hmm. That's roughly. Okay. So what we did, George is saying that the artists that were in our research group mm -hmm. were thinking and painting like that. So we looked up for a pair of glasses that were constructed on that lensing property. Mm -hmm. And when we put them on, our paintings become holograms. Yes, that's very interesting. You have uh, the holographic glasses here to, or 3D glasses here to, to view the paintings through the other hologram perspective. But better still, there's a book called the beauty of fractals, images of complex dynamical systems. Mm -hmm. And there's beautiful pictures in there. If you put the glasses on, boy, they are holograms, right? Mm. Or holographic lock. Mm. Right? You've got to use pocket terms. Yeah. Sure. They're holographic lock. Yeah. Right out. Now, in the chapter labelled Freedom, Aesthetics, now Freedom, Science and Aesthetics by the Professor Gert Ollenberger. He wrote that the excitement surrounding these pictures demonstrate that out of research a bridge can be built between scientific rational insight and emotional aesthetic appeal, the two combining to show the structure of reality. But the thing was, it wasn't the excitement surrounding them, it was the sign, the engineering principles of Buckminster Fuller coming to life mm. in the painting. And that's what we've discovered, mm. and we've had it looked at 
by many medical people, and, and, and they have an opinion here in the book, also legal, international experts on law, and we have some endorsement from a chair of World Peace from UNESCO, mm -hmm. and another endorsement from uh, a segment of the United Nations Millennium Project for Futures Research and Development. So we put the book out now to say, hey, stop the bloody rock, mm -hmm. get out of it, right? And it's been backed by a lot of very famous people. Would you, would you like to see one of the people? Sure. Okay. because 10 different people could witness something like a car accident and everybody would see something different and they would fight and argue and say, I'm right, no, I'm right. And really they all just had a little piece of the puzzle from where they were viewing things. Like yeah, that's dancing. Yeah, reality dancing. That's got it, yeah. Right. Now, yes, this think. gentleman has a gold medal of honour from the Einstein Association. Okay. And this is the big one for me, the electromagnetic one okay. from the Humboldt Association. So okay. he's a hero. And all this thinking, right? A real guy that is really out to help. Wolfgang Weber. Yeah. Okay. And he was the electrical engineer that set up. He was head of the construction of the the German um, electromagnetic communication system. The um, forget the technical name now. Telefunken. Mm. So now we've got people like that coming together and they are saying, hey, what the molecular biologist Sir C.P. Snow said during his Reed lecture mm -hmm. at, at Cambridge University in 1959, if we don't make this bridge that we were talking about in, in, in the book The Beauty of Fractals, mm -hmm. we become extinct. The same as Fuller, mm -hmm. Utopia or Oblivion. And th th this is the excitement now. We have more evidence to show that we're right and that for a long time you couldn't show that the Einsteinian worldview wasn't quite right. It had a, a right. virus in it. Yeah. So, um, but children are being born and able to maintain this understanding and knowledge too. Yes, And they're they geared towards that direction. So that's saying that something has shifted in consciousness, mm. that we're seeing this in our universities and in young kids. Yes. So that's yeah. exciting. That's hopeful. To me, it is a reality that must win. It will. Yes. Yes. And, and it's not a case of dancing in the moonlight to make it happen. Not whimsical yeah. or being, yeah. I mean, it's a case of listening carefully to the people who are dancing, yeah. what they're saying, and putting it into a mathematics to stop those idiots pressing the button. Because there is a technology involved here. There's got so much wealth in it access to other dimensions of reality, yes. that's for sure, oh, yes. that we are completely stupid. We are overpopulated, but we, we don't have to cull people out. People are saying nature will cull them out. That is not an ethical, godlike thing to say. Mm -hmm. It might have been okay in the dinosaur age, but not now. There is plenty for everyone if we develop, as you say, the, the children are trying to move into. Mm -hmm. that, that's the, we know where the children are going. Because we know how the, the woman's compassion and the love and compassion for children yeah. orientates the development of DNA for the babies. That's right. And we know that those children should be there. That's right. But we want to know where they can go. Mm -hmm. Now, do you want to quickly have a, a little play, work out of where they could go? Sure. Matt, during the Renaissance, the famous map was from Ptolemy in ancient Egypt, or in Egypt, right? Mm -hmm. It had a map of the world. They had an equator mm -hmm. and then some ice on the top of the water. It was roughly accurate. And then somebody said, oh, well, let's put where the wind blows, the trade winds blow, for six months this way and six months that way, okay? Mm -hmm. Then somebody put, ah, put a north on the top. So he had a map then for trade, travelling around the world. If you had a lot of salt, you'd make a lot of money if you could be blown to where there were fish to be grabbed out of the sea. Mm -hmm and then blow them back to Italy, that would be a very valuable map. Leonardo da Vinci had ratio maps, mm -hmm. and there were other maps that were considered immoral, mm -hmm. the slave trading maps, mm -hmm. and so on. Now the map, if I can quickly say it, quickly, 
and I'll have to make it a bit up quick, right? Yeah, I think if you lay, done. if you lay the main calendar mat, for example, which has accuracy in it, right? Mm -hmm. And you lay it over Ptolemy's back, you get a new direction. Mm -hmm. It's not north, it's the electromagnetic direction of subatomic particles that are taken for the evolution of the universe. That's the one to follow, we think. Yes. Consciousness. Yes. For the direction of life. Yes, and exactly. Infinity. And all we can make sure is not to push our beliefs or ideas on our children of what we think is right, but really listen to But watch to them carefully. Them. Watch yes. them carefully, because they're walking and talk. They're just not talking. And so are you. Yes. So, so what, what I'm saying is that we, we've got to be careful too. We don't know what we're getting into. It's very big. Mm -hmm. But you are walking the talk. And of course, it's almost irresistible to say, well, you're a woman, you're going to be told what to think, right? Mm -hmm. Which is the way we are at the moment. If a woman behaves like a man, she'll get a big job in government. It's not on. We have to make it balanced. We have to understand the female energies in a far different way mm -hmm. than our technology allows us to at the moment. Yeah. Good. It's more an nurturing kind of a way, a gentle kind of loving way of not just looking for the benefit of me or if I had children or my family, but everyone, everybody's involved for the greater good, for not this planet, but for the universe, because there are ramifications and it does ripple out into the cosmos, the cause and effect. Exactly. Now, we will go back to the to the Greek nouns, the beginning of science that was banished because it was pagan. I remember you mentioning that in here too. Now, there was a good and an evil mm -hmm. in science. This is very important. People out there listening should listen carefully. Evil was described by Plato and other philosophers mm -hmm. as a property of unformed matter in the atom okay. that could emerge to destroy civilization. Mm -hmm. Now, if anyone listens to that as an atomic bomb, for example, right? Mm -hmm. And good was for the health of the universe. That was good for the health of the universe. Mm -hmm so that humans would not become extinct. Mm -hmm. So now, the people teaching that science, in 3rd century BC, it had two names. It was called the Science for Ethical Ends, mm -hmm. in the Platonic tradition of Greek philosophy. And one of the universities, it was called the Epicurean University, it was called the Science of Universal Love. Mm -hmm. We know it existed because Cicero, the historian complained about it being taught in 1st century BC Rome. Mm -hmm. And this science, the teachers were called saviors. Now, I'll leave it to your imagination, right? You've heard of the Knights Templar? Yeah. They were convinced that their saviour was taught at the same school as Pythagoras. Mm -hmm. And uh, during the formation of the um, during the 18th century of the United States um, democracy, mm -hmm. President uh, Thomas Jefferson actually wrote a Bible about it. Mm. I don't want to get mixed up in this, okay. but there's a lot we don't know that's been kept from us. What are you saying? You must have this religion, and the other one is pagan. Yes. That is wrong. Well, I always looked at it just like, mm, how can you ever expect to write uh, a poem if you're not allowed to use this letter and this letter and this letter because it's wrong, evil or crazy kind of a thing. You're never going to have the full picture kind of a thing, right? You're just denying your, uh, pieces of yourself just because you don't understand it, you know. I mean, live, or uh, evil, spelled backwards, it's live. So I look at this world as very backwards, that's how I can make sense of it. So to live your whole life not in your infinite potential would be evil and a disservice to the world as far as just, um, Knowing that so many people are afraid of their failure, but actually they're afraid of their life and potential and the change and the responsibility that goes with it. And so when we uh, refuse to step into that power or that responsibility and we have other people think for us, we don't necessarily have our best intention in mind and we've given our the world away to evil. In that way, to wake up to that is to realize to think of, of helping for the greatest good. It's good. So yeah. that's how I taught myself that. But then, see, you are speaking now at the cutting edge of quantum biology, but in terms that mainstream science prohibits. 
It's inconceivable. Mainstream science is changing, I'll tell you. Yeah. There, there's so much happening now that the, the old science is looking very stupid. And, yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is the thing. It's, we can't, like we were saying, look, not, we were disregarding this because you're not speaking in the way that we are used to hearing it, kind of the thing. And because it's all the same thing in different packages and cast of characters. That's what's so frustrating, but I have to conform and tell people and speak and, and say what I think they want to hear in order to be understood or regurgitate it back to them. It doesn't work like that. It's like, um, oh, yeah, how do I explain it? It's something you can't get out of because under the economy, which is obeys the entropic logic of Einstein's worldview, every dollar that you spend, a certain amount of GST goes out to hold up the structure of a failing economy. Yes. And you've got to, you get frightened if you, if you want to buy a house or you, you're losing your job. And it's precious. We need to get an overall legal look Mm -hmm. A medical look and a moral look. And that's what's lacking because that's what's people, lacking. It doesn't exist. People are looking for funding in a way where it's unethical and it doesn't. The system doesn't have our best intention in mind, and it's just wanting to keep control and debt on people and do jobs that they don't really want to do, but what is expected of them in society in order to pay their bills, as opposed to following their dreams and their passion, trusting the universe is how I look at it, and just. Uh, and I live off of donation, and by living off of donation, I'm not paying taxes. And by not paying taxes, I'm not contributing to bombing other people in other countries innocently, kind of a thing as well. When you buy a product and you say 10% 10, 10 goes to GSP, unfortunately you are part of it. I, I worry, I think that the economy now, the global economy is collapsing. Yes, it is. But there is so much wealth out there. Beyond belief, yes. That if we can say to the bank, instead of scaring him, right, they go grandchildren too. We say, hey, you got the brains for this sort of stuff. Look at this opportunity. Go for that. And I think, and I believe mm -hmm. that we will get research funding as the economy collapses. We will get it. And uh, we have what we have is a program. Our program to be able to trace a seashells energy life for source through mm -hmm. space time now applies to humans. Yes. We know how to do it. Yes. In 1990, the world's largest research institute in the world, based in Washington, IIII spy milestone series, mm -hmm. reprinted our theories as one of the great optical discoveries of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. But because the world view was as you're saying it is, mm -hmm. we couldn't move out of it. We had to find out how the artists actually, using their minds, were altering things a little bit. And live through trust and intuition as well. For uh, even if you heard of a book drawing from the right side of your brain. Right on the yes. Yes. I find that book really interesting because um, when I was teaching myself how to draw, I realized that I had to alter my perspective dramatically, even how I saw things. For example, if I wanted to draw a nose, I couldn't look at it as a nose. I had to look at it as shapes. If I wanted to draw, um, looking at a picture and, and try to copy it, I had to look at it upside down because that's how they were teaching you to look at it in a kind of abstract, kind of holographic kind of a way. And then something happens where your brain shifts and you go into the right, mm -hmm. and then you're able to draw. And so that's extremely important for people to understand as well. But then it goes into just, that's why I was saying what I was saying before about taxes and just contributing to the system and society as opposed to just following your passion, which is what you did with your art, your dream, doing what you love to do, what you wanted rather than what was expected of you. And then see what came to you because of that and how it linked back to the left brain because so many people tend to favor the right or the left brain. And to favor one over the other is to make you into the half brain. Aren't we a whole brain? Don't we eventually have to unite the two? Right? I won't say right, but you're on the right track. <laughs> the, the way you're expressing yourself is desperately needed. Mm -hmm. From where I'm at, we have to give it a coherent mathematics that is to do with emotion. Yes. Right? We, 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 like a doctor is not allowed to, to operate and, and, and kill people. Mm -hmm. In mathematics, there is a way to test these things out on paper. Mm -hmm. We're looking for that. It's, it's not so hard. And the more we listen to people like yourself mm -hmm. and the things that you're saying, 
the more we can start, well, we obviously know that person is not stupid, right? Mm -hmm. And it gives us an opportunity then, because this is, is a complex subject, mm -hmm. and we do have to, I think, get some base, like a, a, a foundation. When we built this castle, mm -hmm. we had to put in foundations, right? Castle on the Hill, yep. uh, to be castle. in Calgum, Australia. <laughs> Beautiful place, come check it out. Mount Warning. Mount Warning. <laughs> Near Tel. Burn God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what we've got is the foundations to build from what you're feeling and other people are feeling, mm -hmm. right? So that we don't be irresponsible. We don't say, hey, you can't prove this. We have to prove it that it's for the good of the molecule of emotion. That'll do. Yes. And that way we can link science and art, which you've got representing art, or the humanities, right? Mm -hmm. And if we don't make the bridge, we won't survive. You know, um, have you heard of the research that was done about prayer? And how they were saying that they found, when they were studying, prayer was most effective not when people were going, you know, please God, help me with this kind of a thing. That, but when people were saying, I know you're going to do this, thank you, it's done. <laughs> well, that's positive thinking. It's so very, very powerful to visualize is to create. And we wouldn't be anywhere if we were well, we were visualizing first and foremost. You, you, the things that you're saying, yeah. the things that you're saying resonate with me straight away, right? Mm -hmm. But there are different languages that we're speaking. Jargon. Right? Terminology, yeah. No, different terminology, yeah, no, different. If I go out there having won a gold medal or and make a mistake, <laughs> that would give me a lot. Yeah. And, and, and You're trained to do your job, I'm trained no, to do No, no, I'm self-trained because I thought that, yes. the, that the paradigm in science was quite stupid. Because, I mean, life has trained you, not someone else. Yeah, that's sports. right. Life has trained you to do the exact work that you're doing now, and life has trained you to do the exact work that I'm doing now. Now we're putting the two together that's in right. this interview. And it's bigger than being here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. It's very exciting. Yes. And I mean, then going back to terminology as well, just, I mean, if I find that I'm speaking to... Uh, scientific mind about say something mystical like an aura okay immediately put up a wall that's it you know that's too much for them but if i were to use the word electromagnetic frequency they were fine if i were to speak to a religious person about psychic well that's too out there for them but if you use the word gut or intuition oh no it's fine kind of a thing so just being very aware of the kind of people you're speaking to and knowing that that's for your kindly disposition right mm -hmm. A generous disposition, experience picked up by children. They know you're not going to belt them and push them around mm -hmm. up here. Yes. And if you're gentle, loving, yes. speaking to that part of them that already knows, not the personality, the stubbornness, the ego, or the programming. Correct. That's what Montessori was studying in electromagnetic terminology. Mm -hmm. And and um, I'm amazed that the Jesuit priest Tilani Chan actually wrote a formula that we're using. To show that E equals, uh, e equals MC squared it was not um, full, it wasn't complete. Picture of the universe. Mm. It was just destructive. And it went out with a bang all right. <laughs> and then I remember how you were telling me when I was uh, uh, quoting some of Einstein's quotes, you were saying that's not even him. No. Can most you, quotes. Can you share a bit about that? That's no, no most, most, most quotes are there. For example, Let's get a bit the problems of today cannot be solved with the same thinking of yesterday. Got it. Because that's a really profound thought. That's what we're doing right now. We're getting people to realize this and think of the box in that way so that we're not in the same patterns of the past. Okay. Now. We, we, we'll get one, one example, right? Imagination is more important than knowledge. Here. Okay. A lot of people think that Leonardo da Vinci was a great figure of the Renaissance. Ah yes, thank you for reminding me, I wanted to now, get into that as well with you. I made all the notes, marked it down, and then I couldn't need it, because as soon as I this started talking a, to you, we sparked. Th this is one of my essays just recently. Ma Marsilio Ficino's Italian Renaissance. That's the guy that Cosimo put in charge of the rebirth of the banished Platonic Academy, mm -hmm. Plato's Academy. Mm -hmm. And he was put in charge of it, right? Mm -hmm. Now, Harvard University has written that his mission of the Renaissance, the rebirth of Platonic logic, mm -hmm. love, Platonic love, you heard, was one of the great, 
great writings of the world, right? Mm. But, let me tell you, Leonardo da Vinci said and wrote that the key to him was not a spiritual mind's eye optic, it was the eye, the source of all knowledge, which was not part of the Renaissance. Now, people get horrified. You can't explain to them that Leonardo da Vinci came up with a mechanical worldview that influenced Descartes, the philosopher, influenced Sir Francis Bacon mm -hmm. with his laws of physics that we understand are creating hell on earth. Mm -hmm. And those three were the pivot people for the industrial age. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the spiritual optics was not understood by Leonardo da Vinci, mm -hmm. although he did try for three years to study it at the Plato's Academy, right? Mm -hmm. But he was n not a good student on that. But he was a genius, like Einstein was a genius, mm -hmm. but they went off on the wrong track. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very hard to say to people, hey, you've got to think for yourselves. Heaven forbid. Yeah. You don't want to think for me instead? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's so important that you share this because so many people have these ideas about Da Vinci and we hold him up in, in high regard and we're not looking deeper into it and what's really happening and when it started to go askew. Da Vinci was clever. But let's say he made the Turin Shroud. You have to be pretty clever to do yes. that. Yes. It was a con job, a religious con job to fleece money, right? It was. Yes. If he did it, and it looks like he did. But the other thing, the flying machine and the, the submarine and the inventions, they didn't come from da Vinci's mind. They came from Islamic science during the, the, the time of the Toledo mm -hmm. School is trying to give a rebirth of the lost science, mm. and Jewish people, Christians, and Muslims all studied together. It was called the uh, Translator School for mm -hmm. 200 years. And the guy that really figured out these machines that Da Vinci was writing about was uh, a Franciscan monk called um, Roger Bacon. Mm. And the Pope said to him, Pope Clement, I think it was, said, Okay, I'm interested, you can write about it, but when the when his protector died, he was put in house arrest. But his writings still exist. And um, he was into the optics, the spiritual optics, that Al Haytham, the father of optics, was writing about from the writings of Plato. Mm -hmm. And Plato wasn't right with everything. Mm -hmm. Al Haytham corrected bits. But when you put the whole thing together, you get something very close to what you're talking about. Yes. <laughs> well said. And it's, um, it can be clever. You can be clever, but doesn't mean you can be right in the highest order of being right, as far as I see a lot of people who are very smart, but are smart themselves out of their own happiness. Is that really that smart after all? Right? It's not how smart you are, but how are you smart, too? It, it's, it's terrible. We, we had Plato. I, I don't believe in the philosophical discussions of Plato for government, right? Mm. They didn't work. We haven't got any yet that really worked. Mm. I believe in the mathematics that was immortal mm -hmm. that they'll discuss. That works. That is tried true. and true. That uh, served us in the past, where we could see we were clearly more advanced in the past than we are now. What's happened? I'm, I'm talking We're about the, the emotional mathematics, right? Yes. Which we did not. We banished because it was pagan. It was terrible things happened about that. Yeah. But Plato did write something of interest. He said, "Watch out for the artist." He's an irresponsible sort of a person that can draw illusions of reality and then, with irresponsible music, convince the mind to accept it, like when you're advertising for America. And that's what we want on TV non-stop. Mm -hmm. This world that Plato warned against. Selling thoughtlessness with such casualty. For money. Yes. But um, we, we've got a... We have a direction to follow now based on this molecule of emotions purpose because we can photograph him, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we can assume it's God-like purpose. Okay. Okay. What we need to do is get on with it. But the, f we, the funding isn't available now. I think as the economy collapses, people are going to fund it. Of course. People will be guided to it. That's right. They'll know that this is something that's there are a lot of people who have money, but they are looking for the right thing to do with it, and unfortunately they've been misled to give it into things that continue to perpetuate the problem. So they're being guided right now, intuitively, yep. and to have that clarity in that direction. 
Again, you yourself and your team needs to visualize clearly how it's going to come about as well and trust it. Well, we try to do that too. And, 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 and Trial and error, what works and what doesn't work kind of a thing. In order to be a chess master, we need to know exactly what doesn't work in order to know what does to be successful. Yes, and I feel that this is what this life is about. I think, but first we had to experience what we don't want and what doesn't work. Yeah? Good. That's why I'm not worried. To me, of course, I'm worried from what I see. I see it too. 18 million people at the moment in Africa are starving to death. I know. That is not ethical. I agree. If we wanted a better God that would stop that, I think that we can generate that God. In the way ourselves, you're in collectively, ourselves. Exactly. having, if being free from ignorance and having a clear idea of what we need to do and how we need to do it. Exactly, but, but hang on, if you, if you were listening to, the, to the, the dinosaurs that governed evolution for a long time, and you said, hey, stop. The lady trying to throw us right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you'd lose your arm and your head, quick smart. I don't think that the ethics, the godlike ethics could have existed then. But they can now. But they were preparation and, and foreshadowing of things to come, laying that foundation for yes. it to come about. The, the science and physics is now so complicated that virtually anything's possible, but as you said, you need to get a stable methodology that you can investigate with. And we were lucky with the seashell design. We were very lucky that we made the big discovery. Now we can see that the methodology given to us from China's greatest physicists can you mm -hmm. We can see that it applies now to the humans a lot. See, but, but that's a folly too that we need to watch out for because me and children, we all understand that it's not complex. It's very, very simple. We keep it simple. As we get older and we go to school, they make it more complex than it actually is. It's just innocence. It's just heart. And when the mind gets out of the way, then we get into the heart intelligence, like heart math, and you can look it up. To me, have a mind to me, a heart. to me, I've been lucky. I've been all around the world a few times. Mm -hmm. I've spoken to a lot of philosophers. I'm a philosopher for 20 years in who's who of the world. I can't afford, if I want to feel responsible, mm -hmm. to be complacent. Again, that's your. This is your role. This is my role. Correct. It again. But but you do give me. When you go away, I listen to what you've said mm -hmm. and think. Now here's a good thing that we know: the chaos is represented by unthinking processes. The minute you think you're developing life energy for its purpose, that's, well, that's mathematically correct, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm still need to make discoveries that I can prove to be fairly, not sceptical, but be careful I can't take anything on board that I'm not sure of. Fair enough. Right? That, that's part of me. Fair enough. But you're onto something that my brain says to me, well, you better listen better. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have some more conversations then. That's wonderful, yes. Mm -hmm. I think that you're doing something very important. Thank you, and I feel the same way about you. <laughs> that's why I was so eager and excited to interview you. Do you guys see now why? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll meet again, sure. Yes, we will. Um, I want to ask you a little bit of, before we go about Buckman and Mr. Fuller. Are yes. you in personal contact with him? No, he died. But Mr. Fuller was developed the exact same research methodology that my science, our research centre, developed. And there came a thing called fullerene chemistry that was named by the three 1996 Nobel laureates in chemistry. Mm -hmm. And they developed fullerene chemistry as a basis of a medical institute called C60. Mm -hmm. Carbon's got strange properties that are, are what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I realise that the money system, the big multinationals, are not going to give that science a chance in hell. Mm -hmm. So I renamed the fullerene chemistry as platonic fullerene chemistry because Fuller did develop his mathematics from the philosophy of Plato. 
that's getting into your world. Okay, I think I might be talking about a different thought than Mr. Fuller then, so... No. This is not the same Only thing. one. The engineer with the geodesic dome? All the spiritual geometries? Yeah. Golden beam? Might be a different one. You, got, you know what I'm thinking about. Which okay. I said that there's another Buckminster Fuller out there. It can be. It's an amazing work. Yeah, but not... That's just interesting. That's okay. Um, so just wrapping this up, this also comes down to oneness as well, that the world's success is our success, and our success is the world's success. Sure. You can't have one without the other kind mm -hmm. of a thing. Agreed. Yeah. To know that this planet is a micro of a macro, and extend it out. We can't be two fullers. <laughs> <laughs> the synergistic universe, mm -hmm. is that that's fuller? A balanced universe. This is a different one, I think, but that's okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm curious. Yes, okay. Is there anything else that you want to share before I let you go? Yes. Okay. Look at my camera and tell the world. Don't be shy. We have shown that the mathematics from ancient Greek science mm -hmm. became alive when people used ethics. This is virtually what we're talking about. That you can make things happen if you put ethics into your thinking. Mm -hmm. Now we know that that did actually happen. So we're using that mathematics now to develop a new or an advancement of the original science for ethical ends. And we have scientists around the world that are actually understanding this and debating it right now. Mm -hmm. But Mr. Fuller was, um, he's an engineer that built the geodesic dome, yeah. right? And um, he, said, he said that the geometry was in bacteria, mm -hmm. and everyone thought he was mad, right? Mm -hmm. Until they found it, they photographed it in the bacteria. Mm -hmm. And he wrote the book called Utopia or Oblivion. Okay? Yes, yes. And um, that's the fuller, but he died. Okay. But um, that's all right, we can mix things yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything that you're, that you're no, wanting to... No, I think we did well. Um, I'm kind of concentrating on what you're saying. And, and my head's spinning a little bit Sorry. because you've said a few good things that I need to reason about, right? Sure. But um, Fuller, um, Plato thought that from the mind came thought forms, mm -hmm. ideal thought forms mm -hmm. from a deeper reality than the physical reality around us. The spirit reality. Sure. Oh, yeah, I he called it that, I call it holographic. That's the same, yeah? Yes. And I think that that the energies to do with the electromagnetic thought forms are the basis of a complete new technology and that we are just at the threshold of it now. A technology that liberates us, not stagnates us, because our exactly. technology really stagnates us. It's for the good of the universe and it's to avoid extinction. Mm. In the past, if you developed a science like that in the time of war mm -hmm. to help the enemy, mm -hmm. you could be uh, in trouble. Mm -hmm. we, we have to wait. We don't, you ask me what I'm worried a bit. I don't want to get into a situation where somebody says, ah, oh, well, that's only for us because we're the goodies. You understand? Mm -hmm. We've got this guy, we've got this flag, and the others have to die. I don't want to get into a situation near that. And I think that we are approaching it to World War Three if we're not careful. So yes, I am. My understanding that will be averted, or it will end right before, right before, when it starts. There's just too many people that are consciously aware right now of what's going on. Well, I agree on that. We're here to write a terrible wrong. That's what my dad always told me about <laughs> this time. He said we were in a higher dimension of consciousness, and we had this one bad grade on our report card, and we had to drop down into the third dimension. To write a terrible wrong. I that's what I was told at 16, if you want to know. Well, no, no, that's okay. I think we are able to get out of it. I know we are. But, from where I'm at, I don't want to make a mistake when, when I put some formulas down or some organised for formulas to be created. They have to be, have faith and all will be revealed to you because the equation is correct that's and right. will solve for X. That's right. But the X has to be love and compassion. Right? That was in ancient Greece, in Egypt, 
And when the, the first kingdom collapsed because of a great drought, the people demanded that the second kingdom use the mathematics of mercy, compassion and justice to become political law which explains hospitals and old age pensions today. By developing, the Greeks developed that mathematics, mm -hmm. then it was banished as heresy mm -hmm. um, because it got mixed up with the, 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 the whore of Babylon mathematics right. in the Bible. But the Egyptian one was different mm -hmm. and it got banished. And I think that it is so incredibly great what we can do if we don't have that World War Three, we don't need it, we don't want it. Now, if there was a God, he wouldn't allow it to happen kind of mentality, right? So, so no, to me, he better pull his finger out and well, yes, get the sack. Mm -hmm. But, but I, this is how I think. Mm -hmm. And I believe in that God-like force, right? I believe in this uh, energy force, it's self-organising, it's God-like. Mm -hmm. And if we worship it, with our minds, mathematically, will make the same jump that they made in mathematics when they made the original nous from a static mathematics into a living mathematics. And we know the mathematics now, we've, we can prove it, it's alive and it goes against the worldview that we've got now. So everything is coming together and it's very, very complex. It is. But it's more on your side than it is with the silly science we've got. <laughs> See, but and God allows these kind of things because we allow it. I don't and care. There is no, a no. sense of free will. Hold on a second. God has more faith in us than we have in ourselves. Where would we be and how would we grow and learn if we bailed our children out of every little thing? Right? We have to learn and figure it out. And there's faith in that that we will. I mean, that's like you making a mess of your room and, and you're told, I don't have to clean it because my mom is going to come in here and clean this for me. Or I'll just move into another room. You're a great that's philosopher. You, you get away with this in the philosophy debate, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm still worried about getting the, the message across mathematically, right? I think that mathematics, as the quantum mechanics said, can alter the fabric of reality, right? Mm. But in, a, in the quantum reality, there is a thing called a beautiful attractor, it's an energy form. Mm -hmm. It's got a hook on it, right? In quantum biology, which is what you're talking about, mm. The hooks can mesh, they can entangle. Mm -hmm. And that is wisdom through beauty. It's called a um, strange attractor. Mm -hmm. Your beautiful attractor links up to the strange attractor and we get out of this mess we're in. And understanding that this is a hologram, yes. you mean that this is all almost like um, a dream, yes. if you will. Yes. An artist, before you're staring at a blank canvas mm -hmm. and before you paint, you're dreaming of all the probabilities. Well, that's your philosophy. That, that's what we need to listen to. Yeah. Keep it up and get into spirited debate with, with positive scientists because you'll be educating them. Do you want to Make, introduce me to some? <laughs> well, that's good. You'll be making them think because there's one thing out there. The rocket scientists can't think properly. They're in real trouble and they won't let go an inch. All right? Because it's, uh, it's a lot of uh, responsibility and uh, humbleness to look at all the work and things that you've been studying for such a long time and say, you know what, maybe I haven't been going about this the right now, the way. Good... It feeds ego. And no, 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 there's a good thing about this. There is. Yes, but here's the good thing. All the bad science that they've learned isn't imaginary, it's a real. It yes. does work. Yes. The clearer they are at that, and if they can make the, the bridge, they, they're genius in some of them can entangle, to take us really full. We do need them to, we don't want to isolate them, right? We have to, to say, look, you've got grandchildren to think about that. Yeah. They're all, there's a lot, of, a lot of upset scientists at the moment, right? They're starting to wake up and see as well. I mean, well, we, it's But just we need them, we need them, because what they've learned... I wouldn't disregard anyone. I know they're all pieces of the puzzle. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Some of them are quite clever pieces of the puzzle. If you can get them to feel themselves free to investigate. You see, at the moment, they can't. They're not allowed to. Einstein's second law of thermodynamics says, you don't do that. Hmm. Right, now, when, when anyone ever said, you don't do that when I was younger, straight away. I'm gonna go <laughs> yeah. and do it. Reverse psychology. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat from this tree. Don't push this button. Don't open this box. <laughs> How to do it. <laughs> Surely God understood reverse psychology. Oh, yeah. All knowing God. 
That's true. <laughs> we don't pull out the <laughs> Motivates, that's okay. Um, there's a few other things I wanted to share, but I think that it's interesting that um, rocket scientists, for example, are able to do and know the things that they know or build uh, a, a satellite to even fix them, but we know nothing about the dreams or the heart or how to raise happy children. You know, that's something I don't understand why we never look at that, why, we're, why our values because, are so skewed and because, our values are so skewed. Because in our technological world view, to think about these spiritual values is inconceivable. Mm. You see, exactly. when Einstein said, yes, you can have observer participancy, yes, the mind can change the structure of the fabric of the universe, he then said, but it has to obey the laws of physical reality. But before physical reality came, in the abyss, if you wish, mm. when there was no light, then came light, then came matter, he never had any knowledge of the geometry that existed then mm. that he could use to balance. You see the mistake he made? Mm. He was half there. But he got that from, and we know it because he, he and um, his friend, his colleague, um, Lord Bertrand Russell were, were, were thick as themes and, and, and Russell said look you've got to worship Einstein's mathematics in despair, total despair there's no belief in anything greater than that you have to, now that is Russell's most famous essay he was actually thrown out of his 1940 teaching post at the college in the New York uh, College um, University for being immoral. Smells like insecurity to me. Well, he, um, he he was following the teachings from Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. And um, it was about war and things. You have to accept it. Mm -hmm. It was very complicated. If if you know the um, story of Ishtar, it gets very complicated. Mm -hmm. She she had remorse after she done her thing. Mm -hmm. Was crucified for three days. Rose again and all this. You don't want to get mixed up in too much of this. Just look at the mathematics. I do. I don't worry about the. I would have probably gone to her um, horrible classes on prostitution to find out what was going on. Unnecessary. Well, yeah, but you try and tell that to a young man, right? <laughs> if, if we could. The, the young men for a time in ancient Greece, as a medical. Uh, what do you call it? Um, forensic investigation at level of mummies and that. Okay. The, the Babylonian civilization did have a worship of this goddess of prostitution and war, mm -hmm. so you would expect there would be sexually transmitted disease to be prevalent. Well, it was in gonorrhea and syphilis, but in Egypt, those two didn't seem to exist. Mm -hmm. It was perhaps they were protected by the desert, mm -hmm. but they were sexy, all right, if you know about the ISIS religion, mm -hmm. right? But, and it was pretty good stuff, too. But it was for the marriage. Mm -hmm. It was respect for the women, etc., etc. It was really pretty good. So in the forensic report that was put up by the American government working with the Egyptian government, mm -hmm. the author just said, look, for a long time, the Egyptian civilization was so great that we can only wonder at it mm -hmm. and wish that we could get back into the little bits of it mm -hmm. for ourselves. That's, that's an interesting thing. So um, I think the, 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 when they put compassion and mercy into politics as law, mercy, compassion and justice as law, that become political law based on mathematics. Mm -hmm. We've forgotten that, that, that well, we take it for granted that we've got um, hospitals and pensions. That's where it came from. Mm -hmm. The Greeks got it and advanced it into the world more what you're talking about than the science that we've got. It was pretty much, they would have debates about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And they were good at that. But it was only when the mathematics came into it, when, when someone could, oh yeah, I mean this, and give it a mathematical structure that you can prove things. Now, the mathematical structure that you want is for the health of the universe, for good, not for destructive chaos. Therefore we can't be like the Western medicine and just address the physical body That's right. and just give it a cream or a shot or something and address the symptoms as rather than the root of it by looking at not just the physical, the mental and the emotional and the spiritual and the heart and the, all the other 
think we'll get around to that. I think medical science is making the breakthrough now into your world. But it's got to be done, I think, with a lot medical logic, right, to do with the, the, the purpose of the molecule of emotion in space-time, right? Mm -hmm. That has to become a medical understanding. That's what's in the book here. Uh, we've got a doctor of um, medicine writing that chapter. We need to... You know in medicine you can't write something like Aunt, Aunt Mag Maggie Malone's radium mixture that they used to drink when they were feeling sick last couple of centuries ago. They all got um, radioactive poisoning, right? We can't do things like that. You with me? Yeah, I'm with you. And I think that there is more evidence now to back up your debates mm -hmm. than there is for the LMS theory. I think it's more real. I think you're in a more real world mm -hmm. and, and good luck to you because we, we, we have to um, put the two together. Yes. And, and, and instead of people being scared of mathematics, they think of it another way. It's pattern recognition mm -hmm. of the sacred geometries in nature. That's enough. And it's love in another form. Yeah, yeah, that, exactly. And it's intuitive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's virtually what you're saying. And there, in complex situations too, mm -hmm. the same as you must be, when you're looking at their science. Mm -hmm. We will meet together sooner or later. Yes. Quicker the better. Yes, we will. That's great. We'll bring them together. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.